Good morning. It is 7.09 a.m. on Monday, October 19th, 2020. I'm Christiana Ellis, and I just got up. This is five more minutes. Uh, Rocket is a good boy. Uh, last night, uh, I woke up uh, to find that he had snuggled himself. So he was on his back, like in the crook of my arm. He had just cuddled himself right up against me, and it was very cute. And he's a very good boy and sweet, and I love him, and he's a good boy. I'm not going to point the camera over there because, as uh, aforementioned, my camera is mounted to a permanent thing now, so it's awkward. But also because there's crap all over the floor. <laughs> not like literal crap, but, you know, like stuff. Messy. Anyway. Uh, I, last night I watched um, about the first third of the new Netflix series, The Haunting of Bly Manor, which is kind of a spiritual ha sequel to uh, The Haunting of Hill House from last year. Uh, you know, done a lot, a lot of the same people, different cast, obviously different story, but uh, same production team. And it's pretty good so far. I think so. I'm enjoying it. Um, there are elements of, you know, like the, uh, like when I watched the preview, there was a couple of elements of it that I wasn't so sure about just because like, I know a lot of people think the whole haunted doll thing is scary, but that's just not one of my buttons, so to speak. And so, you know, it seems in the trailer, like that was going to be a big part of it. And I was a little worried about that just cause it's like, I don't, especially care about it but uh at least so far hasn't been um there's like a little girl has a doll house that seems tied to her connection to whatever's going on in this manner and there's been some interesting stuff going on um i would say it's not especially scary so far but that's okay, because it's definitely creepy in the way that a lot of good ghost stories are, and uh, enjoying it so far. And yeah, so uh, at least four episodes in, I recommend it. Although, at the risk of a minor, you know, you know what, I'm not even going to get into it, um, because I, I, I guess. Mm, Never mind. I'm good. I'm going to not even say anything about it because I don't want to spoil something that happens in it. Um, but uh, the. Yeah, gosh. Started getting all wound up in my head to talk about it. And then, no, I'm nope, not going to do it. Um, although I will say that uh, there are clues that have been left. Um, that uh, you could potentially. You know what? This is such a pain in the butt. I'm okay. Forewarning. I'm going to spoil a thing that happens in a in a in a moment of uh, uh, of of this uh, haunting of Bly Manor. I'm not going to give the context. Just a thing that happens. And uh, so if you don't want to be spoiled about that, uh, I will never mention it again, but uh, I'm going to talk about it for the rest of this video. So you have been warned. So what I'm talking about is that uh, this show does feature one of the now, in my opinion, cliched uses of uh, someone steps backward and then all of a sudden gets creamed by a bus out of nowhere. Like, a you know, a truck that's just like, we didn't see it or hear it coming up. It's just like, boom, from off camera. And I would say that, like, given how many movies and TV shows have done that trick now, I would say it's on the better end of the spectrum in terms of how well it's executed. But nonetheless, I just feel like that is such a cliche now that I'm just tired of seeing it even when it's done well the even when it's well executed it's been robbed of its power because instead of being shocked and horrified at what has just happened instead i am like oh they did that 
and I, I think that's really frustrating. I mean, in context, like, like I don't mind the plot of what happens in the story. It is literally just the way it's depicted, right? Because I think that it's, it's just like, obviously a lot of filmmaking is, uses these various little tricks and shorthand for things. Um, but I feel like that's an example of a cheat that should be used seldom. And when I say a cheat, what I mean is the bus can only come out of nowhere and be surprising because we're watching it through a camera, right? Like in real life, you would both hear and see it coming. Like you could be surprised and not be looking that way or something like that. But the show uses the uh, benefit that they have of like, you can only see and hear what they show you to completely disguise and obscure the bus until the split second where it, it, it hits. And um, it's in that way, it is not representative of the actual sensory experience of being in that space, which again is, is okay. Films and TV shows do that all the time. It's part of the toolkit. But I feel like when you do that, when you choose to misrepresent what that, um, what that space would be like to exist in, in order to conceal something so that it can be a surprise, I feel like that should be used a bit more sparingly and ideally not in a way that has been done 150 times in the last 10 years. <laughs> Um, and, uh, yeah, I bet someone has actually counted those, but I'll, I'll leave it there anyway. Um, but yeah, so I still recommend the show, even though, uh, they, they make use of that particular cliche, which I'm a little bit, you know, bored by. Um, yeah, so I'll leave it there and I'll talk to you all tomorrow for five more minutes.